Happy New Year to all who are worshiping here with us on this first Sunday in the year 2021. And as we meet together to give thanks to God for the year that has passed and to trust him for the year that is to come. Now your notices are not printed, but we remind you to remember all those um, who have special needs, and we especially remember Sister Betsy Pender. Keep her in memory in your prayers, and Brother Keith Kemp. And remember Brother Darren Sands, who still remains in Miami. And remember all the rest of our shut-ins and there are those we know who are still going through a difficult time. And while we remember those, we give thanks for those who are recovering. Now, we don't have a birthday list, but we're sure somebody has a birthday. And so we will sing happy birthday for those who may be here or who may be at home. we continue our worship as we sing the hymn number 959, 959, sing to the great Jehovah's praise.
please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading will now be read by Sister Paulette Humes. Our first lesson comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, reading verses 31 through 34. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I loved them like a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their family, saying, you should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will always know me, says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness, and they will never again remember their sins. The word of the Lord. This is our annual covenant service, which is printed in the bulletin, and please follow along as we move smoothly through our service this morning. Dearly beloved, the Christian life to which we are called is a life in Christ, redeemed from sin by him and through him consecrated to God. Upon this life we have entered, having been admitted 
into that new covenant of which our Lord Jesus Christ is mediator and which he sealed with his own blood that it might stand forever. On one side, the covenant is God's promise that he will fulfill in and through us all that he declared in Jesus Christ, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, that this, his promise still stands, we are sure, for we have known his goodness and proved his grace in our lives day by day. On the other side, we stand pledged to live no more unto ourselves, but to him who loved us and gave himself for us, and has called us so to serve him that the purpose of his coming might be fulfilled. From time to time, we renew our vows of consecration, especially when we gather at the table of the Lord. But on this day, we meet expressly as generations of our fathers have met, that we may joyfully and solemnly renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then, remembering the mercies of God and the hope of his calling, examine ourselves by the light of his spirit that we may see wherein we have failed or fallen short in faith and practice and considering all that this covenant means may give ourselves anew to God. During the singing of this hymn number 615, our tithes and offering will be received. Kindly remain seated and stand on the last verse as Brother Timothy Pinder will lead us in the offertory prayer. Hymn number 615, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Hymn number 615.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as the source of all of our blessings. You are the giver of all good things. Lord, as we bring these gifts of money this morning, we would ask your blessing upon them and your blessings upon us as we seek to commit to serve you during this coming year. Be with us, guide us, and strengthen us so that this offering might be used to reach out into the community to show your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Let us adore the Father, the God of love, who created us, who every moment preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. Let us glorify in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor, who went about doing good and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, who was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin, who became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, who was dead and liveth forevermore, who opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers, who sitteth at the right hand of God the Father in the glory of the Father. Thou, Thou art, art the King, King of glory, o Christ. o Christ. Let us rejoice in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose power enables us, who waits to do for us exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. All, all praise, praise to thee, thee, O Holy Spirit. Let us give thanks to God for his manifold mercies. O God, our Father, the fountain of all goodness, who has been gracious to us, not only in the year that has passed, but through all the years of our life. We give thee thanks for thy loving kindness, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We, we praise thy, thy holy name, name O Lord. Lord. Thou hast given us life and reason and set us in a world which is full of thy glory. Thou hast comforted us with kindred and friends and ministered to us through the hands and minds of our fellows. We, we praise, praise thy, thy holy name, name, O Lord. Thou hast set in our hearts a hunger for thee and given us thy peace. Thou hast redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. Thou hast given us a place in the fellowship of thy spirit and the witness of thy church. We praise thy holy name, O Lord. In darkness, thou hast been our light. In adversity and temptation, a rock of strength. In our joys, the very spirit of joy. In our labors, the all-sufficient reward. We praise thy holy name, O Lord. Thou hast remembered us when we have forgotten thee, followed us even when we fled from thee, met us with forgiveness when we turned back to thee, for all thy long suffering and abundance of thy grace. We, we praise, praise thy holy name, O Lord. Lord. Let us now examine ourselves before God. 
humbly confessing our sins and watching our hearts, lest by self-deceit we shut ourselves out from his presence. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, who has set forth the way of life for us, thy beloved Son, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our reluctance to follow him. Thou hast spoken and called, and we have not given heed. Thy beauty has shone forth, and we have been blind. Thou hast stretched out thy hands to us and our fellows, and we have passed by. We have taken great benefits with little thanks. We have been unworthy of thy changeless love. Have, have mercy upon, upon us and, and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, we beseech thee, the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our inconstancy and unbelief, our neglect of fellowship and of the means of grace, our hesitating witness for Christ, our false pretenses, and our willful ignorance of thy ways. Have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us wherein we have wasted our time or misused our gifts. Forgive us wherein we have excused our own wrongdoing or evaded our responsibilities. Forgive us that we have been unwilling to overcome evil with good, that we have drawn back from the cross. Have, have mercy upon, upon us and, and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us that so little of thy love has reached others through us, and that we have borne so lightly wrongs and sufferings that were not our own. Forgive us, wherein we have cherished the things that divide us from others, and wherein we have made it hard for them to live with us, and wherein we have been thoughtless in our judgments, hasty in condemnation, grudging in forgive us, forgiveness. Have mercy, mercy upon, upon us and, and forgive us, us, O Lord. Lord. If we have made no ventures in fellowship, if we have kept in our heart a grievance against another, if we have not sought reconciliation, if we have been eager for the punishment of wrongdoers and slow to seek their redemption, have, have mercy, mercy upon us and, and forgive us, O Lord. Let each of us in silence make confession to God. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. We now stand to sing the hymn printed on page 10. Here I am, Lord.
please be seated. And the joy is mine again this morning to join with Brother Earl Pindu in extending a very loving and warm welcome to all worshipping with us on this Covenant Sunday, this very first Sunday of the new year of 2021. And we also extend a very, very special welcome to all of those joining us via social media. We pray that you will sense in a real way the presence of the Lord among us as we worship and fellowship together. So again, thank you for the joy of your fellowship. The treasure of time. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. And so, gracious Father, we look to you again in prayer as we prepare to receive from your word this morning. We thank you that your word is everlasting, but also ever-living, timeless, but always so very timely. And I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight through Jesus, who is our rock and redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. The treasure or the gift of time. As the people of God, we gather this morning in worship on this first Sunday of the first month of this new year of 2021, the second year in the decade of the 20s. Where has the time gone? It seemed like it was just yesterday when we were beginning Y2K, the year 2000, which brought so much anxiety and concern to so many. And now we're at the beginning of 2021. Perhaps for many persons in the Commonwealth and indeed throughout the world, 2020 will long be remembered as the most challenging and life-changing year of this decade. Because of all that happened, the lockdowns, the losses, the loneliness, and a global pandemic, which seemed to have brought the entire world to its knees. As someone has said, it's a year we all would like to soon forget. Perhaps for some, 2020 was a year of blessing. Dreams were fulfilled. Goals were achieved. Relationships were formed and mended. And there was a turnaround in life's fortunes. And so for such persons, it could be viewed as something of a good year. Whatever 2020 may have been like and may have brought to us, it is now behind us and we cannot go back and relive it. We're now in 2021, a new year with new opportunities new potential, new responsibilities, new hopes, and perhaps new challenges. It's God's gift to us. And as it goes by, it will become our gift to ourselves and to others. This new year, which will be made up of 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525, 600 minutes, 
and 31 million 536 seconds is given equally to each person here this morning. Each one of us will be given the same 24 hours in every day and the same 365 days for this year. Now what's interesting and important about this time is we cannot stop it, slow it, store it, stretch it, speed it up, or save it. But we can seize it and stare it. Like it or not, time comes and it goes. Time marches on. What matters is that we make it count, for there is no do-over when it comes to time given to us. As someone has said, today is ours, let's live it. And love is strong, let's give it. A song can help, let's sing it. And peace is dear, let's bring it. The past is gone, don't brew it. Our work is here, let's do it. The world is wrong, let's right it. The battle is hard, let's fight it. The road is rough, let's clear it. The future is fast, don't fear it. Is faith asleep? Let's wake it, because today is ours. Let's take it. And on this Covenant Sunday of 2021, how do we relate to, how do we maximize the time that will be given to us in this new year? We all know that of the many New Year's resolutions that are made, most of them will be tossed aside or forgotten by the end of the first month of the New Year. A son called his parents on New Year's Day to wish them a Happy New Year. When the father answered the phone, he said, Dad, what's your New Year's resolution? His dad replied, to make your mother as happy as I can all year. When his mother got the phone, he said, Mom, what's your New Year's resolution? She replied, it's to make sure that your dad fulfills his New Year's resolution. <laughs> I tell you, these wives will keep our feet to the fire. And so on this Covenant Sunday, which is being observed some 273 years after the Reverend John Wesley conducted the first Covenant service, how do we view the gift of time, the treasure of time given to us in 2021? Three responses very quickly. First of all, I want us to notice that time is a precious gift. Time is a precious gift. A young lawyer once said, the greatest gift I ever received was a gift I got one Christmas from my dad. He gave me a small box with a note inside that said, son, this year, I will give you 365 hours. One hour every day after dinner. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. We'll go wherever you want to go. And we'll play whatever you want to play. The young lawyer continued, My dad not only kept the promise of his gift, but he renewed it every year 
and it is the greatest gift I ever had in my life. I am the result of his gift of time. Among the many precious and wonderful gifts God has given to us, the gift of time is one. From the moment we entered this world and drew our first breath, that gift was given. We did nothing to earn it. We could not have purchased or worked for it. And from the moment of our birth till now, the time that we have lived has been a precious gift from God. Normally, the best things in life come with a heavy price tag. But the gift of time given to us by God was and is absolutely free. Whether we're one or one hundred and one, and any age in between, our time thus far on this earth has been given to us as a precious gift by God. As we enter into and live through this new year of 2021, let's be grateful for the time already given. And let's also be mindful of the time that will yet be given to us. Yes, while we give a portion of that time to our work, let's also give the gift of time to our families, our communities, our churches, and to others. It's a precious gift that is beyond monetary value. So as we face this new year of 2021, notice with me, concerning the gift of time, it's a precious gift. But secondly, notice with me that as we face this new year of 2021, which will be given as the gift of time, time is a purposeful gift. Listen to a verse written by a writer in a band from Alabama. This is what he writes. I'm in a hurry to get things done. I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I really got to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and don't know why. This songwriter, I believe, misses the point of life. If you and I are here, we have been placed here for a purpose, for a reason, not just simply to live, as this songwriter said, and die. Some of us discover that purpose early in life, some perhaps in the middle of life, others in the twilight of life, and some unfortunately never seem to arrive at life's purpose and meaning. But we all, says scripture, are persons of worth and value. And we have been gifted with life and time to add value to the world in which we live, to the families in which we have been born, to the communities of which we are a part. We have a purpose for being here. In that wonderful story of the talents in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 29, Jesus talks about three servants who had been given various talents or gifts or abilities by their master before he goes on a long journey. Each was given according to their abilities. Each one was given something of worth and of value. And they would determine how valuable it is and how it was to be used, the purpose for it. 
He goes away. And he stays for a certain amount of time. And finally, upon his return, he calls his servants to account for the talents, the gifts that had been given to them. The one who received five talents went and invested it. And he multiplied it so that he returned to his master with ten talents. The one who was given two did the same. And he returned to his master with four talents. But the one who was given one said, My master is a fierce man. I'm afraid of him. What if I try and do something with this talent, with this gift? And it doesn't work. So he goes and he digs a hole in his yard and he puts it in a piece of cloth, and he buries it. And when his master said to him, What have you done with your talents, with the time that I gave you? He gave it to him. And he said, Knowing the kind of person that you are, I hid it. And so I give it back to you as it was given to me. And you recall the master commanded the first two for what they did in investing and in utilizing, in discovering the purpose for that which they were given. And he scolded it, the one who went and buried his talent. He had no sense of purpose. We all have been given gifts, talents, abilities. And they're not the same. We use them, yes, to earn a living, to provide for those entrusted to our care, to contribute to our places of work, and help make a difference in our communities, in the nation, in the world. There's a purpose for our time. And so St. Paul tells us to live wisely, to redeem the time, to utilize the time wisely making the most of every opportunity that comes our way. For the days, he says, are fleeting, are going by. Make this new year of 2021 a purposeful one. If there is something that you've always wanted to do, make this the time to do it. Use this year to a greater purpose, to do something new or out of the box. Yes, COVID is real, and we have to be cautious and careful, but don't allow its lockdown to lock down your life and prevent you from continuing to live life to its fullest. Time is a precious gift to us. Time is a purposeful gift to us. Finally, notice with me, time is a passing gift. At times when I speak with my mother, who is now 92 years old, she often says to me, son, time really flies. Sometimes I ask myself, where has the time gone? It seems like the days at times are long, but the years are so short. And how true it is, we cannot stagger it, slow it, or stop it. It marches on. The seconds become minutes, the minutes hours, the hours days, the days weeks, the weeks months, the months years, and the years decades. Time marches on. And that's why we seek to make every year count every month of every year, 
every week of every month, every day of every week, as we seek to make the most of every opportunity. I close now with the words of John Wesley. As he reflected on his life and the years that had been entrusted to him, he wrote, do all the good you can, in all the ways you can, to all the souls you can, in every place you can, at all the time you can, with all the zeal you can, as long as ever you can. Life is a book in volumes three, the past, the present, and the yet to be. The first is written and laid aside. The second we are writing now. The next and last of these volumes three is hidden from sight, for God holds the key. There is a time to everything, and God has blessed us with the second day of this new year. And may he grant us all a new year that's blessed in every way, safe, protected. And may we use the time given to us wisely. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And so, Father, as we prepare now to renew the covenant and then receive those emblems which remind us of that covenant, we pray that you will meet with us and bless us in a special way. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. And now, beloved, let us bind ourselves with willing bonds to our covenant God and take the yoke of Christ upon us. This taking of his yoke upon us means that we are heartily content that he appoint us our place and work and that he alone be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and temporal interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please others. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is assuredly given us in Christ, who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make the covenant of God our own. Let us engage our hearts to the Lord and resolve in his strength never to go back. Being thus prepared, let us now, in sincere dependence on his grace and trusting in his promises, Yield ourselves anew to him, meekly bowing in his presence. O Lord God, Holy Father, who has called us through Christ to be partakers in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and engage ourselves for love of thee to seek and do thy perfect will. We are no longer our own, but thine. I am, I am no, no longer, longer my own, mine own, but thine. thine. Put, Put me to what thou wilt. wilt. Rank, Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put, Put me, me to doing. Put, Put me to suffering. suffering. Let, Let me be employed, employed for thee, or laid aside, aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. thee. Let me be full, let, let me be empty, empty. Let, let me have all things, let, let me have nothing. I, I freely and heartily yield all things to thy, thy pleasure and disposal. And, and now, O glorious and blessed God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, and I am Thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bonden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O oh Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And now as we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we stand to sing the hymn number 746, I am thine, O oh Lord.
We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. You created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your own image. Though we sinned against you, your love for us was constant and you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the savior of the world. Sharing our human nature, he was born of Mary and baptized in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him in glory. And through him, you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us to be your people, a community of faith. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Savior took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send down your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table. Let us to have mercy and on this end. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and be in us. Amen. We invite you now to draw near in faith as you receive these emblems as an expression of your faith in the sacrifice given for us. And as we have been doing, we shall observe social spacing, so we'll have about seven people at a time at the altar. If you are from the same family, then you may cluster together.
holy, all wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, know now living and rejoicing in the peace of Christ. And may the God of peace go with you. symbols of Christ's body and blood. Now rise and go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. Amen.
sacred story gathered around its head of life. Go now, living in the grace, the power, and the peace of the cross, and may the God of peace go with you. Amen. have been fed with the symbols of Christ's body and blood. Now rise and go in the power of the risen Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
and fed with the symbols of Christ's body and blood. Now rise and go in the power of the risen Christ. Amen. Please join me for our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for feeding us in this sacrament, uniting us in Christ, and giving us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet, prepared for all humanity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now close with the hymn number 745, 745, on praise to our Redeemer.
he's received the benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling and who will one day present us faultless before the presence of the Father's glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. And to his church be blessing, peace, mercy, and grace, now and forevermore. And all of Christ's people said, Amen. Amen.